Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this short video, we will have a look at the latest box for the Covenant of the Enlightened Faction for Dystopian Wars, which is the Icarus Battlefleet set. It is one of the first releases of 2023 and uh, it is quite a small box in terms of quantity compared to the other ones. Of course, it is a bit cheaper as well. Uh, however, we will see that it might be a good box to start the Covenant. Not as good as the gigantic Archimedes Battlefleet, but uh, you do get a lot of different things and it is enough to get a standard point uh, force. So, yeah, good place to start. And uh, thus, before we start to have a look at what is inside, if you are a newer player, let's talk about the Enlightened and how they play on the table. First things to know, it is uh, a quite elite faction. Most of their ships are more uh, expensive than for other factions, and uh, they are relatively more fragile uh, per point. So they take a little bit more getting used to. They do have a lot of tricks, offensively and defensively. We will not uh, check all of them right now. But uh, yeah, they do need to be used uh, with delicacy to make the most of their points back. They have a lot of very exotic weapon, uh, lots of little tricks they can use like teleportation or repairing etc. So it, they're very good and their ships are usually uh, either very versatile in the sense that they can do a lot of different things very well. They have some, uh, for example, aircraft carriers that are also good fighting ships uh, or they are very specialized but when they are specialized uh, then they are basically the best ship of the game for this specific task. Uh, most of their ships are usually dedicated either to point blank because they have very good weapons at point blank or they have very devastating forces for boarding actions or they have ships that prefer to stay at extreme range uh, because they have uh, extreme range weapons such as cyclonic uh, cruise missiles or they can have for example a lot of SRS tokens or aircrafts or they can send some giant uh, whales to attack etc so, but usually at extreme range. Uh, now that we've seen all of these little details, uh, let's have a look at what you get inside the Icarus Battlefleet set. It is 50 pounds, which is a little bit higher than the 44 pounds that we are used to know, that we do use to know for this uh, size of box. However, as you might have seen uh, already in our unboxing of the Icarus Battlefleet box, uh, the Icarus itself is a huge piece of resin. Uh, it's almost as long as a Nansen, which was a or Archimedes, which was a mass four ship, and they're just a lot of little resin pieces and details. Um, it's really chunky, and that might explain uh, the rise in price. I think it's only going to be this specific box that is a little bit uh, more expensive than the standard uh, price. But you know, except this uh, absolutely gigantic Igarus, again, have a look at the unboxing video. Uh, if you want to see how it looks in real. Uh, you also get uh, some frontline uh, sprues, which means you can build two frontline cruisers. Uh, there is, as you can see, a whole lot of variants that you can build. Uh, we will have a look at all of them. Uh, and you can also build six frigates. Again, a lot of different variants, and even more than before, because in this uh, Icarus box, there is the updated version of the frontline sprues, which means mostly like additional uh, weapons and bits, especially for the frigates and also for the front line. You get some new uh, exotic weapon, which is a quite good uh, bonus and upgrade uh, to differentiate from the earlier uh, versions of the front line sprues. If you want again to see uh, what these weapons look in real, I point you to the unboxing video. Here we'll talk a little bit more about the rules. You also get uh, two SRS tokens uh, for the Enlightened, of course, a lot of little. Um, base for the token to really make a big pile because the Icarus is an aircraft carrier, uh, not the Daedalus though, which is the other version you can build the ship as, and you also can send um, aircrafts with the Chatelet and Ulysses version, so having some SRS token is always a good thing. Now that we've seen what is inside, let's talk first about the main new boy in this box, which is the Icarus Aeronautic Fabricator. Uh, as you can see on the picture, it is quite chunky and it is uh, an aircraft carrier. Uh, the style of the, of the ship, some people love it, some people are less receptive to its charm. I must admit that I find it a little bit chunky. I prefer the more uh, sleek lines of, for example, the Archimedes or the Nansen. But I really like that they just send the aircrafts like vertically from the side. 
think it's quite uh, unique and yeah, it's a cool style. Uh, now, about the rules. This little beast is 265 points, which is far, uh, fair. Uh, however, it can send no less than 10 SRS token. Uh, that is quite big, like you, uh, usually you don't send that much uh, far from that with a mass 3 carrier. And also one thing to note is that the Covenant and like uh, SRS token are much harder to destroy than for other factions. Usually you need three counters to destroy a uh, SRS squadron. Here you will need four uh, tokens, uh, which is uh, quite uh, huge. Um, it, it is a little bit harder to focus fire because uh, Covenant SRS cannot gain weight of fire. So there is no point in just stacking all of them against one enemy. You will never gain rerolling blanks. Uh, but this means that you can uh, send, uh, spread your SRS token across the entire enemy fleet. Send, for example, two SRS per cruiser or maybe three uh, SRS per battleship, etc. And you can really spread it out and you don't miss out on weight of fire. Uh, and you, you, it's harder to intercept him. So having 10 SRS token is huge, really, especially for the Covenant. It also has Flag Barrage 6, which means that statistically you will remove uh, an SRS token of the enemy around, maybe sometimes more if you're lucky. And uh, this is even before something to intercept. So it's really a good air superiority uh, mass 3 flagship. I would recommend to use it as a carrier, like as a real aircraft carrier. Unlike, for example, what we recommended for the Nansen, which was more of a battle carrier because it could really, it was tough. It could go to the front line, it had a lot of weapons, uh, you could use it like this. Uh, this little guy has uh, half the particle beamers, it has a lot less weapons, and especially uh, it takes only four hull points to lose until you get into a crippled state. Uh, that is quite bad. And uh, it's, if you get crippled, you go from 10 to 5 SRS tokens, uh, which significantly reduces the firepower of the Icarus in terms of raw damage. It does have armor 7, which means that with Entropic Generator you need 8 hits to start to lose uh, hull points. F uh, fair. Citadel 14 is also nothing to laugh about. And especially, it has ADV 9 and uh, in battle ready status and six in crippled value which is huge because let's remember that against uh, many many types of attack the covenant can use their crippled adv value to try to make some intercept uh, interception attacks so you will have six dices to try to intercept most of the enemy attacks uh, sometimes more if it's rockets or torpedoes so it's really huge, uh, huge but it means that you rely a little bit on your own luck and uh, yeah, you can sometimes tank a whole phase of firepower with this, and sometimes you will lose your four hull points in a single or two attacks. So be careful, better to hide it than uh, relying on all your defensive tricks. The Icarus also gets advanced repair facilities uh, too, which means you will throw five dices to repair. Uh, it is good with this uh, little uh, ship that wants to be a little bit more in the back, maybe. Uh, circled by your own ships because uh, first of all you get to repair criticals and disorders on the ships around you and uh, since you get enlightened signs you can also repair hull points on yourself or on ships around so having advanced repair facilities is really good for the covenant in which fleets you can take the uh, icarus well the most basic fleet where you can put it is the enlightened support um, battle fleet uh, you need the icarus obviously you need to bring between one and three surface unit and you can include up to two submerged and or aerial units. So it's a well-rounded battle fleet. You gain a command override which is very good for the Covenant because the Covenant already have uh, very reliable weapons. They have a lot of weapons with uh, sustain, like most of them. You also sometimes get fusillade so you get a lot of rerolls already and command override allows you when you really make a bad roll to like, okay, I cancel all of this and I just roll it all over again without using my sustained yet. And it makes the Covenant, which is already very reliable in its firepower, even more reliable. So good thing. Uh, one thing to note is the Icarus does not want to be in strategic reserve. It wants to be in the back and it wants to send its SRS for the first two turns, which it would not be able to if it goes to strategic reserve. So yeah, in many videos you hear us saying like, yeah, it's even better in strategic, strategic reserve. Uh, the Icarus typically does not want to be in strategic reserve. The other variant uh, with which you can build this big resin flagship is the Diadelus Fortified Tether Ship. Uh, this uh, ship is, it has the same defensive uh, stat line as the uh, 
Icarus. Uh, it is a little bit tougher, like actually significantly tougher. It has a, a magnetic generator, so it is less vulnerable to um, aircraft around it. It has a shield generator, wow, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, quite tough. It trades a rear uh, pl uh, particle beamer ag against a front facing uh, heavy particle cannon, which is a good deal for it, uh, because it's easier to pilot, just put everything to the front, and the heavy particle cannon is just a tremendous weapon. You can also upgrade it to even more devastating weapons, but it, it costs more points. Um, the basic version of the Daedalus is 255 points, which is good. You get a lot of stuff, good firepower, as we said. It is significantly tankier uh, than the Icarus, and you don't lose as much uh, firepower uh, when it gets crippled, and anyway, it will get crippled a little bit later. Uh, it has an uh, alien card for boarding, and it has Frey 9 to start, so it can make boarding actions from further away, and it gains devastating. So really, like, it's not a brawling ship for point blank, but if you do get in at point blank, you can really make your enemies uh, regret coming so close to the Dialellos. So yeah, it, it is a good ship. Uh, it's not meant to go face to face with a Borodino or a Kaiser Elector, but uh, it can really hold its own against even a couple of uh, mass 2 cruisers easily. Uh, what you want the Daedalus for, however, is its amazing support abilities. It has Fortunes of War, which is basically mandatory uh, when you start to play at higher points, like 1500 points or 2000 points. You do want a Fortunes of War that would allow you to cancel the main uh, abilities of your opponent. So it has this, which is actually very rare for the Covenant. And it ha also has Advanced Repair Facilities 4, which is, we already said it was good with 2 extra dice. It is 4 extra dice, so you will roll every time 7 dice to repair with this. Uh, which means that statistically you will repair a lot of stuff. And yeah, statistically you will repair at least one hull point, sometimes more, uh, on yourself or ships around, etc. So really good centerpiece for your fleet. It also has uh, these little shield generators, which are the main differences, as well as the AV particle cannon, sorry, uh, compared to the Icarus. If you want some tips on how to build them and what to magnetize, etc., I point you again to the unboxing video. But yeah, these shields are what they call aerial repair platforms and aerial shield projectors. And uh, these uh, are rules that you pay for currently, even though you cannot use them, because uh, the flying saucers of the Covenant uh, which are all their all their aerial units have not been released yet so a little bit sad but even though the dial is uh, good now it will be even better later on when it will be able to boost all the flying saucers around repairing them preventing them from dying and also boosting their shield generators or even giving them a shield generator if they don't have so one if you want to make an aerial fleet of the covenant Having a Daedalus in the center will be absolutely enough to include, I think. Uh, the Daedalus uh, is already a good ship, and if you want to put it, uh, there are different ways. You can put it in an enlightened uh, battle fleet uh, of support, as we've said the same for the Icarus. However, there is another option, which is the Autonomous Research Battle Fleet, which uh, you can only put the Daedalus, you cannot put the Icarus in this, and uh, you need between two and five surface units, but one of them has to be an Origin, which is a variant of the advanced uh, cruisers, uh, which you can get in their own boxes. You can get advanced Covenant cruisers in beyond the Hunt for the Prometheus, for example, or in the Archimedes battle fleet, which I would really recommend as a complement, as a complementary purchase to the Icarus battle fleet if you start to want to play Covenant, as we will talk later when we'll talk about lists. But yeah, you, if you want to play this battle fleet, autonomous research, you do need an origin one way or another. And then you can put between one to four uh, surface automata, which are the frigates, for example, or the variants that you can, variants that you can have. Uh, and you can also have between one and three submerged automatas, which are, the, for example, the Diogenes, uh, which is, again, something that you get, for example, in the Archimedes battle fleet. This is a very good combo. Again, you don't have to take this autonomous research battle fleet. You can absolutely take a basic and enlightened support and play just with this box of the Icarus battle fleet. But if you do want to play a little bit funny and thematic list, this uh, almost entirely automated uh, robotic fleet is very thematic and actually very powerful. Uh, at least with mostly uh, automatas and an origin in the middle that basically gives them 
uh, 5 plus feel no pain, and um, which means they will not die as much. And a Daedalus in the back with Fortunes of War, it's, it is a very powerful uh, fleet and very thematic. And you also gain uh, Command Override with that. So really, really good. Now let's talk about the frontline cruisers. We will uh, go a little bit faster with those because maybe uh, you've already heard me talking about them for when we presented the Archimedes battle fleet. Uh, but still, if you are a new player, those are the bread and butter of the Covenant faction. And uh, they are basically three uh, variants. One that is the basic one with just some weapons. This center variant with a huge cannon in the top. And then the, uh, this version that can send some SRS tokens around. And the variants, like, those are the cheapish variants with only a particle beamer in the front and not much in the back. It's like an etheric lens. And then you've got the more expensive variants with a particle beamer also in the back. And the rules change from one to the other. So you have six variants to build. Uh, let's have a look at all of them. First, the Stiletto, which is the fastest version uh, made for combat. It is extremely fast. Like, it can reach speed 14 if you use full steam ahead, uh, which is tremendously fast like it's also almost as fast as an aerial unit uh, it is a little bit uh, fragile but you can uh, wave lurk from the first turn now with the new covenant roll and if you get in range it will be very powerful either with the particle beamer or you can also upgrade it to a strogenium agitator which is will absolutely devastate something that you are at point blank with so it is 82 points uh, quite cheap actually and yeah just a, a good ship to use to flank on your enemy but don't try to use a stiletto to hold the center then you have the copernicus which has this heavy particle can which can be again upgraded with other variants i will not present all of them here but just know that it's a very good artillery ship it's even easier to pilot because uh, it has a lot of weapons it has a particle beamer which is easy to use but it also has these torpedoes pointing only at the front and these big artillery that you can choose for example heavy particle can can also only shoot in the front arc so it's easier to pilot in a way because you just point it at the enemy you want to shoot at and then you shoot everything you have and it is quite uh, efficient for 133 points so okay it is ex expensive but this main heavy particle cannon is really devastating if you want only one or two of those cannons, it's good to go with Copernicus. Uh, if you want a big pack of three, then you should go uh, with a pack of three Antarcticas, and we'll talk about why in a minute. Finally, in the cheap versions, you have the Châtelet, which is a reconnaissance um, cruiser. Uh, why? Because it is fast, once again. Uh, it has a single SRS token, and it has a Vanguard. So if you use it with Wave Lurker, you can be sure that you can uh, point at any enemy and put a uh, SRS token on the first turn, on your first activation. Because between wave lurking, so you will deploy later, and uh, Vanguard, which means you can move before the game begins, uh, you really can reach anything with your range of 40 uh, inches for your aircrafts. It's a very good way to put a uh, spotter on an enemy on turn 1, uh, which combos very well with, for example, these cr cruise missiles that we talked about earlier and that want an SRS token on what they're going to shoot at. Uh, however, if you only buy the Icarus uh, battle fleet, I would maybe not recommend to put the Châtelet because you don't have the ships that re allow you to use this combo. But if you buy, for example, an Archimedes um, battle fleet, uh, then it's a good idea sometimes to have a Châtelet. Even though, like, if you know you will play your Icarus as an Icarus, so as an aircraft carrier, uh, you don't need the Châtelet at all. It's it's a tough. It will uh, have range. Uh, no need to take this weaker version just for SRS token, I think, except if you really want to go all in in this combo. Okay. Then we have the Lovelace, which is uh, the most uh, standard version of the Covenant Cruiser. Uh, it has it, it has been through several variations. Uh, sometimes it was too weak, sometimes it was too strong. I think it's quite good how it is now. It's quite balanced. Uh, it's 96 points, uh, which is uh, good, like it's fine. Uh, it is not that resilient, uh, even if it has an anthropic generator and can wave lurk, uh, it will melt if the enemy uh, starts to focus fire. Uh, however, if uh, the enemy does not deal with him, uh, the Lovelace can have a lot of firepower, especially the closer you get to the enemy. It really wants to be at closing, or even better, at uh, point blank with lots, uh, a lot of its support weapons. Or you can stay with your particle beamers, which are actually fine even at long range, depends on how you want to, to do it. But uh, yeah, Lovelaces, Lovelaces, I think, are good uh, with some special weapons and just going at point blank. Um, 
and doing tremendous damage. And yeah, if you don't know what to build and you're like, ah, I'm not sure, do I want artillery, do I want aircraft? Want? You can always build lovelesses, just don't uh, glue the turrets, just put them there. Uh, because uh, this way you can build them as a stiletto if you want, depending on your list. And yeah, you will never regret having some loveless in your list. They're very good all the time. Then we go to the Antarctica, which is this absolute beast of a ship. Uh, again, you get some uh, new uh, heavy weapon bits uh, in this uh, new frontline sprues. And the Antarctica is just your... If you start to have Antarcticas in your list, it's going to be your main damage dealer. Because it has this amazing main cannon. It is much more expensive at 150 points compared to the Copernicus. Uh, and it is a little bit harder to pilot because there is a rear a particle beamer which the, cannot shoot to the front and let's remember that, that your torpedoes and main can can only shoot in the front so it's a little bit trickier to use especially if you start to have them in packs of three but if you get a pack of three these ships have heavy firepower which means that all three antarcticas uh, can use if you make a valor action and you're not uh, intercepted by your opponent with this uh, with fortunes of war it means that all three cannons will use their uh, lead value uh, for the attack, which will make an absolutely devastating blast that will obliterate uh, sometimes, like, you, you can really, if your enemy is packed, you can obliterate half his fleet uh, in one shooting action. So it can really do a lot of damage. Expect the Antarctica to be focused fire as soon as they get exposed, because, yes, they're a little bit tougher than, for example, the Lovelace, but they cost so much and they are so threatening that your enemy will have them as its number one priority to sink. So be careful, don't treat them as tanking ships. They are not meant to tank the enemy fire, they are meant to stay hidden and do a, an absolutely amazing burst of fire, firepower uh, when you activate them. There is also, uh, if you want to buy just one of them, there is the Belgica, which costs 170 points, which is a lot, but it is a much more powerful Antarctica and it also has a chill generator, which is which is good, which is good. Um, but uh, yeah, just a, a good, uh, good ship, but Again, if you want a single ship with a main heavy particle cannon, maybe go to the Copernicus, which is like 40 points cheaper, and uh, yeah, I would, I would suggest that. Finally, the last of the frontline cruisers is the Ulysse, which is uh, kind of like the Châtelet, but uh, it is more expensive at 110 points, but you do get a lot for that. First of all, you go to Armor, Armor 6, which is huge, because Armor 5 of the Châtelet, you can get sunk very fast. Uh, so that's already a huge point. And you get, uh, of course, a particle beamer in the rear. Good. And you get anti-air specialist, which is very good because the uh, Ulysse is your anti-air cruiser. And uh, there are more and more and more uh, air units uh, with every month in the game because they start to be released. So having uh, one or two Ulysse is uh, absolutely a good choice. Um, yeah, if you go to a tournament and you don't know what the opponent's list will be, it's good to have at least one of those, maybe two of those. Uh, if you know what your opponent is playing and he doesn't have any aerial unit, ah, okay, maybe it's not that important. But uh, if in your meta there are at least a little bit of air units, having one Ulysse to deal with them is a very good proposition. Plus it has some uh, aircraft uh, SIS token, again, that you can use to trigger a spotter, for example. So yeah, good ship. Then you get the Covenant Frigates, and uh, there is basically two variants. Uh, first of all, all the point-blank variants, so you have the Merian, you have all these new weapons that you get in the frontline sprues, for example the Kaidin, the Dorian, the Prevost, uh, all of those want to be at point-blank to do their firepower, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, there are a lot of different variants, uh, however they have a special rule that allow you to bring two of... Uh, two Merian units per battle fleet, which, uh, which is good because otherwise it would be really difficult to mix the variants. Uh, however, all of those uh, variants here, they do want to be at point blank, one way or another. You can use strategic reserve, good way. You can use uh, these uh, turbo encapsulation, or you can use an Archimedes with its uh, special like teleportation uh, valor effect. But there, you need to find a way to teleport your Merian and get them close to the enemy one way or another because if you just uh, have them going up the board, uh, they are relatively fragile for their point cost. So be careful about that and have a plan for them. They are not so easy to play. And like, for example, the submarines, the Diogenes, which are much, much easier. The one variant that is easier to play is the Germain, 
might not be the most uh, overpowered ship in the Covenant by far, but it's, uh, it's a good ship. You can keep it in the back at the same price as the basic Merian, so 36 points per Germain. And uh, yeah, they can shoot from further away uh, relatively nicely. Of course, if they get at a point blank, they are more efficient. And uh, yeah, they're really good. They combo extremely well with the Origen that can keep them uh, tough. Uh, and if you have an Origen and you wave lurk them, they, yeah, they're really annoying to shoot at because uh, it's hard to actually kill them for their point cost. And when they die, they might just stay alive thanks to the Origen. So it's really good and it's a good counterpunch uh, unit. So if you not sure which version to build. First of all, maybe just don't uh, glue the main turret. That's a good first option, or you can magnetize it. And if you don't know really what to build, I would recommend building the German, which is a very easy to use uh, version. The other one, the main, may be a bit frustrating if you, after a few games, you still cannot get uh, into the good uh, point blank range. Might be a little bit harder. German will do their job. They will not be <laughs> extremely impressive, but they will do their job and they're fun to play. Finally, let's talk about some lists. Uh, what can you actually do with this Icarus uh, Battlefield set? I'll give you three examples. The first one is, okay, you're a new Covenant player. You bought this box, it's your first box for the Covenant, and you would like a good uh, fleet that is a little bit powerful, shows you a few different things. I would recommend this. Uh, you build the Icarus as an aircraft carrier. It's very good, you can use it as it is. It's, yeah, it, it is an efficient uh, aircraft carrier. You build the two frontline cruisers as Copernicuses, because this is a good, powerful ship, and they have this main cannon, and they're a little bit easier to pilot, because you just want to point at your enemy. You can either play them as uh, individual cruisers or a pack of two. And then you put six frigates, uh, probably six, I wrote six Marians, but whichever variant you want, uh, either Marian, either Germain. Uh, so you can uh, fit in the 750 points, which is the standard game. And yeah, two packs of uh, Germain or one pack of six can be very fun to start to play the game. I would probably recommend a pack of six. And uh, yeah, play a couple games with this fleet and it will teach you the game. And uh, it is actually relatively strong, like if your enemy is not expecting it. Uh, two heavy particle cannons can really do a number on your enemy. And if you hide your Icarus well and just send like two or three turns worth of SRS token, you will sink your enemy just with uh, just with SRS. And it's uh, actually, there is uh, it's gonna be hard to, for your enemy to prevent this. And yeah, just a good fun fleet if you just have this box and you can just put it on the table and have fun. Then uh, I wanted to talk about the this support fleet that you can build. It's more like future proofing. Uh, once the um, flying saucer, the aerial units of the Covenant will be released. Uh, if you play at 1500 points or 2000 points game, uh, you can absolutely have a support fleet at 750 points uh, to just plug in and, and play. And this is of course going to be composed of the Diadalus, um, which is going to boost your little uh, flying saucers that want to be in the center-ish of the table. Uh, with it, you can put two uh, packs of six Marians, or if you lead an autonom autonomous battle fleet, can even be more. Like depending, on, you can mix it a little bit uh, how you want. Uh, put Diogenes instead of Marian, etc. But yeah, the idea is that you will have a pack of automatas all around the Diadelus, uh, protecting it uh, forward and preventing the enemy from just charging it too easily. And then a single Origen to protect all the Marians, probably attached to a pack of Marian or maybe even to the Diadalus itself. And yet yeah, just providing some uh, support and repairing the Marians. And just, uh, just a good central block to accompany the flying saucers, give them a lot of boost and still be self-efficient. Uh, to like yeah they can do a, a lot of damage still and they do will need to be taken care of but they are uh, if your enemy is shooting at your Dallas with its uh, shield or your automatas with the origin they are wasting firepower that they are not spending at the flying saucers which will be in this case your main um, damage dealer but again if you are just playing like 750 points game don't play this <laughs> this uh, central fleet it's, it's meant to be a battle fleet to plug it into a, uh, a larger points game and uh, it's not meant to be like uh, efficient on its own even though it might be actually now that I think about it yeah you can try it and tell us what you think about this might actually be fun and then finally a 2000 points list uh, to reach this um, I go from the postulate that you bought after the Icarus Battlefleet the Archimedes Battlefleet which is really like the box that you want as a common player because it has so much uh, inside and uh, yeah with this I 
went with the Nansen, which is the variant of the Archimedes that is actually the aircraft carrier with a couple escorts, um, as the main source of SRS token. Then a Diadelus, which is going to be very important not to boost uh, flying saucers, but because it's just a good ship, it can repair a lot around, especially Antarctica, for example, if it stays around. And the Diadelus has Fortunes of War, which combos very well with the Nansen having logistical support to have more cards uh, to spend to trigger your valor effects or, for example, to use Fortunes of War to intercept the enemy. So these, the Nansen and the Diadelus, combo very well together. Then a pack of three Antarcticas. Uh, which uh, will be your main uh, firepower. If you already built two Copernicuses on the back, you can just uh, transform the two Copernicus in Antarctica by changing one of the turret and then build a third one. This is going to be your main damage dealer. We already talked about the combo, but this can just do so much damage. But remember not to use them as a frontline uh, tanks. That's not what they're here for. They're very expensive for their defense capabilities. Two Lotans, which are the millipedes that you get in the Archimedes Battle Fleet set. I uh, just love these uh, little monsters. They are relatively cheap-ish and uh, they can really do a number on your enemy. And if the enemy tries to uh, damage them and doesn't succeed, they have this Apocalypse Protocol where they can just blow up and do a lot of damage on everything around them. So very fun units to play and it's good to have some counter punch to go and find out, uh, to, to go and destroy the carriers that your enemy might be hiding behind terrain. And finally, this pack that will be the ships that you put in the center of the table to absorb the enemy firepower uh, and waste the enemy firepower on ships that are too uh, cheap for what they tank. Um, pack of six Diogenes, so these submarines that you get in the Archimedes battle fleet, uh, some backline uh, firepower. And then two packs of five Merians, can be Germans, can be Merians, uh, probably Merians in this case. And uh, you attached uh, one origin with those. You make them wave lurk on turn one, and uh, they will stay like this uh, until you activate them on turn two. And uh, yeah, you en the enemy will want probably to uh, shoot on those because if they get at point blank, they are very efficient. Uh, but uh, while your enemy is shooting at the Merian, which are wave lurking, so a little bit more resilient, and they have an origin, so they are a little bit tougher. Do hide your jet, by the way. And uh, yeah, it will really spend a lot of firepower on those, while your real damage dealers, which are the Lotan, the Antarctica, the Nansen, can do their business from behind and be good. And that's it for this video. I hope it was useful. Uh, if it was, remember to give us a thumbs up to like this video. It helps us. What helps us even more is if you type a comment. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to share us around. So if you do this, uh, thank you very much. Um, let us know what you thought in the comments, if you have some ways to improve. Uh, again, if you didn't watch the unboxing video of the Chaos Battle Fleet, uh, I will put the link uh, so, uh, somewhere in the comments. And uh, yeah, very excited to, uh, that the Covenant now have this option. We will record a battle report featuring the Icarus uh, soon-ish, like in, uh, in the coming weeks. And uh, I, uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, remember to subscribe so you can see the next uh, unboxing, tacticas, battle reports, etc. Thank you very much for uh, having watched this video. And until the next one, remember to keep spreading the love all around you. Bye!